The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com. When was the last time you had really good Texas-style barbecue? Eric's Family Barbecue, the way it's supposed to taste. Always delicious, never rushed, and prepared to perfection. Eric's Family Barbecue uses only 100% fresh meat, slowly smoked over mesquite wood until it's juicy and delicious. We all know their brisket is the best, but have you tried their pulled pork, pork ribs, or rib tips? Amazing, and their sides are all house-made. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip. You won't be so. Sorry, go to ericsfamilybbq.com for more information. This man needs medical attention. Holmberg's morning sickness. The old method of treatment for a person in this condition was to throw him in jail. Thursday morning, cruising right along. Brett's headed out there at Black Rock Coffee Bar today. And uh, if you want to go out there, he should be there in about 20 minutes, 67th Avenue and Bell. They're getting all set up and ready to go. Ten cans of food. Help out Operation Santa Claus. Friends at Sanderson Ford put this together, and uh, they do it every year. It's a great thing. Great thing. And if you donate, uh, you'll be entered to win a new Sanderson Ford or Sanderson Lincoln. Get yourself a Black uh, Rock Coffee Bar Classic Drip for 98 cents. That's as easy as it gets. 67th Avenue and Bell Road uh, this morning around 7. Brett should be pulling in just before that if traffic helps him out. If not, you won't see Brett at all. He'll probably go Italian crazy somewhere on the I-10 or the 101. I don't know if you take the 101. You wouldn't take the 101. Ah, I don't know how he's going to get there. He's got his way. He'll figure it out. Uh, a lot of emails coming in saying, Brady, Oktoberfest, the lady was holding a stein, not a sign. Oh, that's she a was big a difference. stein that's holder. That's a big difference. You know, it's made me think, like, why would they make you hold a sign? Like, come on. Or, and plus, you think about it, the sign's not that big a deal. I could hold a sign for three hours and win that. Right. That and, but I thought, you know. And also, in order to do it, there had to be a competition where other people are holding signs. So the place would just be. Just a madhouse of signs. I'm still thinking about what my sign would say at Oktoberfest. Be like college game day. Like everybody's got a sign out Come front. Come on. Sausage would be your sign. Sausages. <laughs> that would be a good one. <laughs> I think my sign would be, shouldn't, didn't we mean steins? Would say my, my <laughs> yeah. I, I would write I that on my, I think I, I think we, I think these are supposed to be steins. The misprint has confused many people. So she held a stein up for three hours. Three hours. That's doing something right there. Oh. That's an, that makes sense for Oktoberfest. I hate completely. to be the grammar police, but. Yeah. <laughs> guys. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this, too, in the news. The, beyond the Rittenhouse thing, which, by the way, I make it sound like there were thousands of people down there. There weren't. It wasn't a very big showing. The Students for Socialism, not a massive group over there at ASU. And then the Carrie Lake support that came down to yell at them, also not in droves. Us logical folks that live in the middle and shake our heads at this world – uh, laugh at this because it got coverage, and I'm I'm not helping, but it's getting so much coverage that you got to kind of sit back and giggle at it a little bit. But chanting Carrie Lake at anybody is just that's totally designed to make the uh, somebody throw a rock at you, which I'm fine with. And I like Carrie Lake. I met her a few times years ago, and she seemed uh, very kind and nice. She was actually really sweet. And then every time I see her now, she's like, yah, 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 yah. she's yelling at everybody. Every time she gets at that podium, she's angry. She's got a little passion. She's like my mom now. My mom, I think she just watches Fox News and just hates the border. I mean, I'm just angry at all that stuff. We can't get my get my mom away from the TV for ten minutes and then she becomes normal again. But you pull her away from that TV right away, you're going to hear about it for a minute. Like, damn Hunter Biden. Anyway, uh, so I'm watching last night. And the other story in the news. Remember that lady that spun and spun and spun when the helicopter yes. tried to? She got her settlement. What do you think she got? Take a shot. Now, remember, she had all of her internal organs pressed up against the walls of her rib cage because they were the centrifugal force was so bad. Seven hundred thousand. You say seven hundred. You know. Two mil. No, nope, she got four hundred fifty thousand. Oh. But there's some possible pops, and I'm like, you know what? She was asking for three hundred. It's a little low. She was only asking for. As far as I understand it, she was like, I got three hundred thousand dollars in medical expenses hey, and stuff like that. Good. Cover this bill. We'll be all right. But it's you know. Uh, you know, I've got a deductible, so I'm not so sure that that's. I would be going after medical expenses unless you had like. But uh, I think she spun like ninety something times, and in the span of like three seconds, <laughs> it was the most amazing spinning. That's a tough count. I have ever watched in my life. I mean, Remember, like I would have figured that was more than that. So would you do it? Is the question? Like everybody's doing the Mike Tyson. I let him for punch me spins? for 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 her to go on that same ride that she went on. And everybody who's seen it knows 
If you don't, there was a helicopter rescue of a woman a few years ago. And when the basket started to pull her up off the mountain, it started to spin a little and a little more. And then for some reason, with the it, helicopter, it lines blade, up with the road. It started to go some... as if it was, yeah. And it was like, and then, and then they tried to put her down, but they realized that they were just going to drive her into the earth like a drill bit if she went we'll down. start weed whipping the, <laughs> right. uh, the desert. Yeah. She's going to be cactus all over, like just buried in her forever. So they're like, oh, just hover her above the ground, tease her like she's about done. She, she went in, she went out of consciousness. Literally, her organs moved. Oh. To the sides because gravity was sideways. <laughs> and if you watch it, it's hard not to laugh and then realize there's a human being in that basket. This is tragic, terrible. No wonder someone posted that yesterday. But for half a million tax free? Do you is go it on the tax ride? free? I think so. Settlements are tax free. No, yeah, the, the settlements can well, be yeah, the settlements are tax free. When they're saying that figure, does that include the uh, lawyer fee? Oh, I don't know. The lawyers get paid separate. No, but I think out of that, they'll get taken out of that. But that isn't taxes. Like that's yeah. yeah you get a settlement just to you. So you're probably taxes income on it. Uh, uh-uh. I, I think settlements are a, like like an inheritance thing. I don't think you can get nailed this badly. I wonder. Yeah, because right, if you be, get that, it it, have to be. it's not an income. JG Wentworth would let us know. It's it's getting you. It's given money that you should have had already back, according to the settlement. K row on that could be, but I've always thought that that uh, when you get the the thing in court and they award you the money you don't have to pay taxes on it it would crush people because if you get three hundred thousand dollars in medical bills and then they hit you with income tax on it it's not even worth going none of these people would do it but for four hundred fifty thousand dollars would you do it no you wouldn't no yeah i would i, I think, think i'd, I'd, ex- I think I'd get be in the box. expecting a little bit more i think i'd get in the box i think it would be worth I it think I, I need my organs rearranged i might hold out point. for seven figures i think i might have to go seven yeah. figures on that and yeah. hold out but uh yeah at least double yeah, I think for sure for a million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no question. I mean, like, line me up like it's a ride at yeah. Disneyland. But she went in that thing for a while. Brady, would you do it? Hop in the back. Probably take the spins. You take the spins for four fifty. Astronauts do it exactly. Like it's training for some yeah. people. I think, uh, but there's. I guess the other side of it is no guarantee you're going to come out of it though. Right. That's the that's right. the yeah. fun. So the there's the fun, Brady. What's the point of them giving you four fifty if it's a guarantee yeah. you'll be so all, either all right? You, you get four fifty or Kirby gets four fifty. Right. right. You're still doing well by the family. I'm not ready for the spins yet. <laughs> really? Yeah, give me a couple of years. <laughs> be great it. if Brady and like, spin finally... away. like if I'm her age, yeah. spin away. Think about oh, really? it though. You could finally be buried with your family. <laughs> oh in Ohio. <laughs> and now you're selling it again. Yeah. <laughs> I worry that Brady would hit that that centrifugal force and then the helicopter would start spinning Whoa. too. <laughs> <laughs> it sound like that band we played. Uh, yeah, I think I'd do it, but I think maybe 450 is a little light. I think she could have gotten more. She could have held out. It's a good price, but they were showing that video again. The TV loves that there's a in this because that video was all over again last night. This lady's spinning. All she was doing was she was 74, just hiking along, Pies de Peak. Two years ago, and the basket started spinning. That had to be, that was three years ago, I guess, almost, huh? And then that little line broke, and she started going. I'm trying to find the amount of time she spun, but she said her medical Somebody bills counted? her medical bills hit 290 thousand. The city of Phoenix said Wednesday in this situation, we're able to come to a an agreement on the disputed claim, uh, and in the said agreement, the city then denies wrongdoing. So part of the agreement is we didn't do anything wrong. Video says you did. I mean, that's pretty bold of you guys to act like nothing went wrong. Nothing here uh, bad happened. This could happen at any time. We're going to give her a few hundred thousand dollars and buy the book. But why would you have to give somebody half a million dollars if you're like, and and we did nothing wrong? Well, then why did we bought the right to say we did nothing wrong? But the video shows clearly that something terrible happened. We didn't do that. Alec Baldwin uh, pulled the trigger and we didn't do anything wrong. So take that. Did they turn around and go after the uh, manufacturer or the helicopter? You know, you think it's the helicopter's fault? The equipment failure? They lost the strap, so maybe you can. Maybe you're right. Maybe they can go after If the strap's there. determined to be faulty, she's got another thing. But yeah, I think she, she just basically that, like, right? this This is your fault, uh, Phoenix rescue operation. Is it a rescue when the rescue is more dangerous than what? I, I think I rolled my ankle. I can't keep walking. All right. Get in the tilt world. We'll get you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and they could have just wheeled, wheeled her out on that cart no, that they used. No, because no. she was on the side of that thing. She oh, I thought where, where she was like, let's do a basket one. No, no. no they don't training. Just, it's not a flip of the coin. Although the one they just did out there on Four Peaks was amazing. He's the National Guard guys here from right next to us. Took one of their helicopters, and the dude uh, had a, his back went out while he was hiking. Gone. Couldn't move. And he's sitting on the side of uh, – 
four, I think it was the four peaks. It might have been superstition, but I think it was four peaks. And it was in some rough spots. And the helicopter couldn't land, and they can't get anybody up to them. So they put the two front, because it was a wheelie helicopter. It had the two front wheels in the front and one in the back. They put the two front wheels on the edge of the mountain and just held it there. The back end just kind of floated over, and they got the guy into the thing. It was amazing. The National Guard, and they're like, we're practicing this kind of stuff all the time. I'm like, no kidding. The, the pilot was amazing because he found this little tiny niche and just put half of the helicopter down. To get this dude into it, it was a unreal to watch. They had, but then I started thinking, how come you had camera footage of this? Somebody had to get up there with cameras. Well, didn't the to helicopter wait have uh, cams on? It was uh, from the ground watching the helicopter come in, oh, and it wasn't hikers. the people hiking. Oh, it was like it? like big, <laughs> good four Ks. I think that's why they recorded. Pretty too. Amazing. Who? The fire rescue. Yeah, or I'm saying they were Park. already up there, so they needed the helicopter to come. Like, there were people there. There was a news team. Well, there's a rescue like team people. and there's a film team. But that's the thing. They were in too dangerous a place to get to. But our news team was but standing over there. Like, your news team's Crystal. right there. Yeah, you've got, you've got Mark Curtis standing that right next to the hiker. How come? We watch the helicopters come in like apocalypse now. Yeah, the spinny basket lady. The man next to me started the fire. <laughs> right. I'm here at the arson. Uh, just, and this is the arsonist himself. The scene of the crime. We've beaten the police and the fire department. Here we're going to film them coming in. Excellent work by us, I think. We couldn't get to the hiker, but Channel 12's beat reporter, Jared Dillingham, was right next to him. What in the world? With a camera? Yeah, they said that uh, uh, we do mountain rescues all the time, but this particular one uh, gathered quite a bit of attention. Well, yeah, because it didn't really go as planned uh, during the rescue. She was packaged on a hoist in a Stokes basket and then, of course, started to spin, Shelly Jameson said. Now, she was, wasn't she the one that did news and then got naked? Shelly Jameson? Yeah. Is that a local guy? Mm-hmm. Really? She did Channel 10's that- news, and then she got naked in Playboy. And now she's the uh, – but I'm fine with that, and I'm not bashing her for it. She's the assistant fire chief. I think that's the same lady. She looked great. It's I think hire. that's the same one. Oh, excellent hire. It was like 1990-something, early 90s. I remember that, but I she don't She was know. a news lady that got naked, and then I think Channel 10 got rid of her because she decided to do Playboy because she has – she's a uh, buxom – she showed him off, and then everybody was like, oh. And then she did like a, she was like the sideline reporter for a roller derby show, and now she's the assistant fire chief. If it's the same lady. It's the same name. Is that the same one? I'm trying to find Poor Shelly Jameson, if it's not. She said, why are you saying yeah. this about me? I don't know. I'm just share a name with somebody I'm familiar with. If you get the same name as a lady who got in trouble for being naked, I know that name. I'm almost always in tune with the, uh, the names of ladies who have been in trouble for being nude. <laughs> It's kind of a wheelhouse of mine. It's almost like being history buffs. I'm kind of a naked lady buff. In the buff. Uh, in this situation, she said the metros in the city were able to come to an agreement. We deny all wrongdoing and liability. Here's your money. But for 450 grand, I think I take a ride in the spinning basket. Doesn't seem so bad. Yeah, I don't know. I think double. If, really? Yeah. Oh, for sure, double. I mean, it's happening, but. If it came down to 450, would I take it? Yeah, I mean, if they had a suitcase sure. with 450 and said, sure. go in the 74 year old basket. That's the right, banker's right, final right. offer. Yeah, if it's if Howie Mandel and a model come up and say $450,000 in this suitcase, all you have to do is get into that basket and start to spin mm. it. All right. Hang on, uh-huh. we got a, fall, a phone call from the banker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, 500000 Yeah, I, mean, I think I'd jump. I'd be like Kramer, deal. Yeah. And I'd, get, I'd be in the basket before he finished saying 450. That's a good amount of dough. You don't have to claim it or anything, but it's a pretty good. It's a great story too because the video. There's, I've got it on my computer right now. He starts kind of like, oh, this is no good, and then when that thing gets going, it is a hundred miles an hour. The RPMs are strong, and this I'm kind of rooting for. I'm not a huge fan of Robert Sarver, uh, but I think what happened to him with ESPN is just absolute bull. <laughs> what happened? That was complete personal hit piece. Of a guy, they tried to make it sound like he was the worst person in the world. They they uh, uh, teased the story for weeks, saying what's about to happen to the Phoenix Suns is the worst thing in the world, and their owner is a devil. And then you hear some of it, you're like, hey, sounds like kind of a jerk, but that's as far as this is. I mean, it doesn't really seem like he did anything uh, too horrible. A lot of asshole behavior, but is it enough to drum him out of society? Uh, but then you hear this, that the former Disney CEO, Bob Iger, wants to buy the Suns. And I'm like, wait a tick. Hold up. Dude who ran Disney wants to own the Suns. Um, Bing bong. That makes for some cool stuff at the arena, I think. 
He's an Imagineer. So he's interested in buying this for $1.8 billion. Now, I don't understand why Sarver would want to keep something that he spent $400 million for that they're saying you can't have it anymore. Here's uh, $1.8 billion to go here's away. Here's five times what you paid. I, anybody says here's $1.8 billion to never do anything again, I'm like, okay. Um, yeah. That seems reasonable. I'll be on my yacht and my boat doing whatever I want. You went Rome. That yeah, seems great. reasonable. It's a reasonable price to disappear from the earth. It's a great deal. I could do that. I think, you know what? I'm going to give you a cut. We'll go one four bill, and I'll disappear I'll for that. Sh- I'll shave 400 I'm gonna mil. Give you, I'm going to give you 20% off. <laughs> That's the deal we are going to make. Yes, so the deal is you hate me. You need me to go away. I spent four hundred million in order to go away. You're giving I me do go one point eight billion to say stop it. Where do I sign? Guess what? <laughs> I'm going to use the N word with impunity now. And I'm going to go away because I've got because my money. what do I care? <laughs> you give me one point eight billion dollars, I'll legally change my name to. <laughs> I will do it. Put you, me in the basket. Spin please, me. Yeah, spin me and address me as <laughs> Sarver. <laughs> I am the N word. I am the walking embodiment of awful. You got it. $1.8 billion drag me through the mud. You know, he's, he's a terrible person. Yes, I am. It's the greatest day of my life, though. A terrible person who is now going to take his jet to the Caribbean for just a weekend because I can. It's a great deal. It did. It turned into a hit piece on the guy. I don't know why Robert Sarver's like trying to hang on. You want to get rid of me and say, John, I know you make this much. Here's 20 times more to not be on the radio anymore. I'm like, you got it. I don't have enough. People would argue this, but I don't have enough ego or arrogance to care that I'm that relevant in anything. Yeah. I got to save my reputation. No, I don't. For for anything over, I mean, that kind of money, call me whatever you want. I'm a sticks and I got duck feathers, sticks and stones me all day long. You can't physically hurt me. Because that's illegal. But if you want to call me names and do all sorts of... Fine. This is a check clear. Cool. But these people... Like, uh, I told you this story before, but when Caliendo and I were talking about John Gruden, and I'm like, why he wants to... St- you know, like, he wants to get back in. It's like, eventually I'm going to get back in. And he's, you know, with the money he made at ESPN, which was astronomical when he was doing Monday Night Football, they paid him a fortune. Mm-hmm. Then the Raiders, of course, giving him $10 million a year on top of it. He said... To Frank several times, I have so m- I have enough money. I never have to do another thing. Like it's it, that's taken care of me. Like my interest is more money than most people make, like right. b- by a ton right. in a lifetime. Like he's got a ton of money, and then with the mere suggestion of why don't you just leave? Why don't you just disappear? Who cares? And he goes, when money doesn't matter to you anymore, yeah, uh, your currency is you. And it just, he just, it's just not a, th- like for all of us, we all think money's this, money's that. We're all having a conversation. What would you do with this and that? He still gets it. He still wants it. You want to stack more on the pile. But the fact you that you don't want to feel is, insignificant. Right. Like you've built this thing up and now it's like, well, now money doesn't even represent anything to me. It's, it's, it's the way we think of air. It's always there. Yep. Um, and you it's, never have to worry. so I wonder if Sarver's in that same boat. It's like, I can't go out like this because money doesn't matter. Give, but one point eight billion dollars matters to everybody. Oh, oh, hundred percent. I don't care how much you've like got. Like four fifty matters to that lady, right? Well, yeah, like one point eight billion matters to everybody. Four fifty matters to everybody. Everybody. But you start getting into the Sarver world, and he's like, I, you know, that's just more on the pile. I, I will never be able to spend it. You got right. more money. That, that's right. kind of what I think. That's the words Gruden said. I've got more money than I can spend. According to his, yeah, the net worth, which is you give or take. Yeah, well, those things like are it's never silver. right. Thirty mil. Yeah, but there, again, worth. he's fine. Seems, that seems that's low. Money's, money. Yeah, money's not an option. I, yeah, I would imagine he's done better than that. Because he was, what, four years with the Raiders yeah. at 10 a year, and he had that crazy deal at ESPN. So it's still, look, $30 million is nothing yeah. to bat your eyes at. But I have I don't trust those websites. Maybe Deuce is spending it all. <laughs> Maybe Deuce is on protein powder. <laughs> man, I tell you what, man, Deuce is eating me out of house and home with all the Raw meat and protein powders. We're still lives at your house, John. Yeah, man. He can't leave. He can't live by himself because he's not taller than the counters. Loves the basement. Deuce is only three feet tall, man. We have to build him a little tiny house. <laughs> you have ramps everywhere. ADA. He's got like eighteen hundred square foot house, but to him, it's like ten thousand, man. <laughs> got a habit trail bedroom. Hey, what? Nice. 
Yeah, you have to, man. Keep him in his little habit trail, his little enclosure. Deuce! Enough with the protein, man. Yeah, I don't know, but if, if, if I'm Sarver, I'm like, yeah, I don't need this. He doesn't go to the games anymore that I've seen. They don't show him. If he's there, he's hiding or he's in a Since suite. Since the maybe. news broke. He used to basically. be a front row guy. Yeah. yeah. He's Now he's he's either in a suite or he doesn't go. I don't know what's going on. And if I'm him, I just quit. But and if Bob Iger, Bob Iger wants the team. Ooh. You get some former Disney guys coming in here. I'm fine with that. They bring good ideas, those Disney people. And Pixar stuff and access to I'm sure he, I don't know if he's still friends with the Disney They man. hate him. Do they hate Bob Iger? It might have been he's replaced. A, like, All right, get out of here, Iger. <laughs> Can't stand you, you piece of <laughs> You know what? F- you mouse. Uh, get out, Iger. Jackass. Oh, he's had a problem with I've you. never liked that guy. <laughs> Jew. Mickey, please. Well, you know my real thoughts, damn it. Anyway. One so, day yeah. they'll release the viral video fight <laughs> on the oh way out God. of the end. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Iger, you piece birds. of <laughs> Hey, Iger, I f*** your wife. They <laughs> hate you, mouse. Get over here. Hi. <laughs> Mickey throws a yeah, digit. Yeah. Ah, I gotcha. That's why I wear gloves. So don't get my fingers in a fight. <laughs> hey, I check my oil, you creepy little mouse. I'm a rodent. What'd you expect, you dumb f***? Minnie throws down with his wife. Oh, Minnie's it's in. Like a- Minnie's gonna, yeah, the whole Iger <laughs> mouse fight was bad news. But he wants to own the Suns now. Hey, John, mm-hmm. for context, a million seconds is 12 days. Okay. But a billion seconds is is around 32 years. So, yeah, I'll go away that for that real? amount of money. Is yeah, my brother told stat? me that one the other yeah. day. Holy cow. Yeah. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah. It's like 32 years. Yeah, I'll go something. away for that. I'd never put it in that kind of perspective. Right. That's insanity. That's a lot of numbers. <laughs> you do with that. You go to the bank and go, I've got $1.8 billion I'd like to deposit. You can't do that. You have to go to 20 banks. That's true. More than that. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. it is it's probably. Well, it depends insured. unless the bank. Takes insurance over and above and say, yeah, we'll hold it for you. I think I just put it in a shoebox. Really? Yeah, I just have a closet of it. <laughs> just just, oh, can you imagine it? waking up every morning going, oh, <laughs> just opening that door of money? Just want to be Scrooge? Yes, I want to. That is a goal of mine is to have just some a basement a, of a jewels to swim in. <laughs> just pop up. A with cellar it. of just, <laughs> just swimming around in gold. That, I, that t- I, If anything, they always said that those cartoons when I was a kid are dangerous for your brain because they – teach a violence and all that. Uh-uh. It ta- taught me that the one thing I want to do someday is swim in gold. I know it would crush my skeleton if I ever dove in and got that deep into a pile of gold, but, man, that sounds nice, just to have a whole room of it, a treasure downstairs. Yeah, I think if they gave me my one My buddy Wilty, his dad, down the basement, we went down there twice, but he had like a cedar closet um, cellar with a safe in it, and we went down there twice, and Willie would open it up. And this purple velvet cloth, he'd pull it back, and there's like a hundred cougarans. Oh, that's, that's some, it, you almost swim in that. You can do like a little tiny hand motions through that. I want the full basement. So yeah, I would probably want that 1.8 billion in, in a big vault in my house. My house would be nowhere near people. I would probably go buy Epstein's thing. Nobody wants that, and it's beautiful. That island of his where he had all sex with those girls. Uh, that, that doesn't bother me. I'm not going to do it too. It's not like it's going to. It's not like uh, you know Michael Caine's The Hand movie that once you touch it, you become it. If I go to Epstein's Lolita Island, I do some upgrades. I'd wash the walls, I'd get all the furniture out, and then it's mine. I've never cared about that stuff. People are like, oh, somebody died in that house. I'm like, so. At the first station we worked at, the original owner, yeah, his idea was to get property up on one of these mountains. It looks like an old mine shaft, but builds the underground lair. Oh, yeah. yeah, gold. Yeah, that's every man's dream. To Unassuming. Sort of weird bat cave. But mine is just filled with cash. So good luck. I, you know, I'm not a Sarver fan. He's done very – everybody's kind of quiet about him. But I am on his side on this one. I don't think he's been a good owner for the Suns. I don't think he's been good for a lot of things. And I've been pretty hard on him for a long time for wrecking this team as long as – you look, again, Earl Watson and him hated each other. But Earl Watson was right when he yelled at him, and that came out in the report. He said, you've had eight coaches and nine GMs in nine years. The problem is you. And then he's like, ah, yeah, yeah, rah, rah, and they started fighting with each other. And that, it sounded like Earl Watson just hated him so much that he yeah. got a few employees to say, didn't you hate him too? Like everybody's got that. We could yeah. get 10 people here 
if we wanted to, to start talking bad about Larry or Trip or me or anybody. Easily. Yeah, and just really yeah, me easily. Yeah, you can find change. ten people that hate me in a heartbeat, but it would be it would be easy. We got one that's waiting to do a tell all. Oh yeah, I've, <laughs> I've been helping her write it. <laughs> Let's get in on that. Sure, there's tons of people that want to do. That. There she is, Shelly Jameson, right? Yep. Is that the same one? Yep. It is. Yep. It's a great Playboy, by the way. Got her fired. And you know the bad news was on the cover of Playboy, they used the old uh, KTSP logo from when. Channel 10 was, uh, oh. I think it was a CBS affiliate then. Oops. And uh, she did the news for Channel 10, and she was very pretty. And then she's like, watch this. And their cans came out in Playboy, and they're like, we can't have that. We can't have you telling people about she baby. Got fired? You can have baby drownings in your cans out at the same time. But, yeah, they were big. My friend Mark Stebbings had that uh, issue. I think his dad had it. I think George's dad had it. And we would go over to his house in Chandler, and we knew where he hit it. It was good. She looked great. And now she's the, she's, I know, look at those cannons. I'm sorry to do this to you, Shell. This is probably, but I don't know how you go through, like, her career arc is crazy. News lady, playboy boob model, gorgeous one. Then I remember she was the, she was a, like, the sideline reporter for televised roller derby. Yeah, they, uh, they just said it here on our Wikipedia page. Let me get back to it. Because I followed Shelly Jameson around for a little while in a creepy kind of way. Roller (laughs) games. Roller games. It was on late at night. And it was like really well done, professionally, the big figure eight super roller derby thing. And she was the sideline reporter. And I used to say, wow, Shelly Jameson is now the sideline reporter for roller games. And they had some really hot girls uh, doing roller games, too. It was like the girls that were doing it. There's some dudes, too, because this is. Oh, it was, it was almost like American Gladiator sexy. The World Alliance. And then, what yeah, the? I'm not going to lie to you. I toss to this regularly. I don't even remember this. Yeah. Do you remember Montana roller games? Oh. They probably didn't have it in Montana. The Rockers and the Violators. This was national. Yeah. And then some of the girls were mountains. and some They all look like Lita Ford. Oh, oh, she was insane. I forgot about her. The teamer. And, the, and they always had it. And it was almost professional wrestling, too. They would do stuff. And have like uh, like the the gorgeous twin girls would take a beating from the mean lesbian, and then everybody'd feel bad. Rock, rock and roll, let's go. <laughs> At halftime, our own Tammy has to make her national TV debut. Yeah, that didn't work. Out. On the Super Roller Dome stage. The Roller Dome was cool too. Prices into it and gets no points. That was pretty neat. Mr. Mean got Brought to you by so LA Gear, more. so you know this is gonna oh, fail. <laughs> Who was, it? Cool. was it Montana that got the L.A. Gear contract? Ooh. Yeah. He's an L.A. Gear guy. Yeah. that. Oh, she was the girlfriend of one of the guys. I remember this now. This was great. And it got a little WWE. They do fake fighting and stuff, but they ever got a crowd. The crowd was always into it. They had signs. Signs, Brady. Not signs. They were just holding signs. Earlier this yeah. season. These two got into a fake fight. Yeah, it was WWE on top of it all, but it was pretty fun. And Shelly Jamison was the sideline reporter, so she was that sideline reporter for that. And then somebody said, you know what you are qualified to be is the assistant fire chief of Phoenix, Arizona. And she is. She does a great job. But I'll always remember her as. Hey, your history is your history. Giant torpedoes. Oh, and she's got nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing. Especially in that Playboy. Whoa. But it was a pretty big deal that she got. A little WWE. Yeah, she got the. WNBA uh, there. She was hot. But she's the one in the fire department now, telling us all about that spinning lady. <laughs> it's pretty good. There were some real crashes on the old roller games there. Scary Spice does look mean. Oh, there were some mean girls on that thing. It, it was sexy roller derby, so it's the exact opposite of what roller derby is. A few years ago, we went to roller derby down at the, the uh, Phoenix Coliseum. Yeah, I know. You don't want to do that. You don't know how it scored. It's just no. all you know is people cheer. You got to pass people. But local roller derby is not. You want national? You don't want to. You don't want to go to the. Hey, we had a few and of they our milf girls, girls were, the in, were in the roller derby. I know the milf girls were roller derby <laughs> girls. But let's be honest, it's like local art. <laughs> this is single A baseball of roller derby. You're not getting the true. Not getting the good and they're not you on the figure eight somewhere though. They're on, yeah, they were probably on an oval. Yeah, they were on an oval. This yeah. had a figure eight and a ramp. No, this was the, awesome. Oh. The roller dome. And the cheerleaders. I used to pause and toss <laughs> to those cheerleaders like nobody's business. They did butt shots of them constantly. Here comes one, I bet. Well, those cheerleaders, they always were on my screen. Pause. It's pretty great. Anyway, 
Thank you, Shelly Jameson, for your illustrious career, and now you're a very serious fire chief. I'm not making fun, so don't get all mad and say, hey, I'm not making fun. I would, I've been a supporter of yours for a long time. Don't come yelling Since at me about that. Was it 89? 89, yeah. yeah. Wheelhouse. I was 17. Totally. I'm beating off to the news lady. I'm sorry. You're going to show them. I'm going to throw them. And I did. Oof. And I did it at my friend's dad's house. Oh. I used to watch uh, George's place when he was out How of town. How many puddles at Mark's house? Mark's dad's house. Mark's dad's In his hot tub, mostly. Oh. I was I a year into selling tub. carpet and flooring. I remember that. You remember, Shelly? Yeah. It was a big controversy. Yeah. Like, can news people do this? I'm like, yes, they can when they have those. Holy crap, Holmberg. I remember Shelly. Yeah. I'm in there, too. Shelly. She is fine. Yeah, she was great. <laughs> I just, I do remember that picture where she's kind of bent over and those things were just out. Anyway, I digress. She is now telling us about the spinning lady in the basket. She probably still looks great. I haven't seen her recently. Not that it matters. She's a qualified woman. She's solid. Doing an absolutely great job. I just happen to remember, when I think of you, I don't think of you with clothes on, and that's your... F- John, let's clarify. If you're going to dream, dream right. Uh, Scrooge McDuck did not have a basement. He had a piggy bank building inside his own building. God damn. It's, you're right. You know what? Stand corrected, and it's better. I have the uh, breakdown of Sarver. He, he still would be able to survive. He owns 35% of the team. Yeah. If it's sold for 1.8, right. he's walking away with $367 million. Okay, so if, he's, if, he gets, if they break it to the 35, that's yeah. pretty good. Okay. That's pretty nice. So he didn't spend $400 million on his own money anyway. Here's the, he, um, and he brings up the point, he paid $400 million and would owe 25% capital gains tax yeah. on his 35% of the one point. On the sale? Yeah. Oof. I'm pretty sure they can get around that. I think when you deal in nine zeros, yeah. you've got a way to get around. <laughs> That's a nice some, some nine zeros just sounds. <laughs> Two commas? Really? Third comma. Three watch com- me yeah, yeah, third comma. Better. Man, oh, man. All right. Well, something that I only I – I have to get hit by a Walmart truck to kind of see this kind of money. <laughs> you got to go – you got to go Tracy. I got a Goddard. full Tracy Morgan to get that kind of dough thrown at me. Or, I mean, that helicopter spin ride's got to be 40 times worse. I don't think I'm surviving it. I'd like that. Uh, Brett's out there this morning at Black Rock Coffee Bar. Go visit him, 67th Avenue and Bell Road. Uh, he's got his uh, cans of food deal. If you get 10 cans of food donated, Operation Santa Claus kicks in, and you are uh, entered immediately into winning a Ford or Lincoln from Sanderson Ford and Sanderson Lincoln. Uh, and you can get the Black Rock Coffee for 98 cents. It's easy. And Brett's got everything. Ghost, Volbeat tickets, uh, tickets to tomorrow's Happy Ending show, outstanding stuff like that. It's all good. Everything Brett's doing is amazing. We'll chat with him in just a second. And also, I have to tell you about this. Uh, today is the first day of the 12 Days of, of uh, Strays. And uh, this beautiful dog that is today's uh, deal. And we got dogs adopted last night. And we're going to do it every day for the next 12 days. Kind of like what I do with the Lost Our Home Pet Rescue we're going to do this every day for the Humane Society as well. Uh, it's just a, today's adoptable dog, and we're focusing in on dogs that have been down at the campus for a while. Uh, today's dog is beautiful. You can check it out at 98kpd.com. It's Marie. She's a harrier um, hound, and I didn't know what that was. It looked like big beagles kind of and, and hound mix, but it's a harrier hound. It's a real thing. Oh, cool. I want to see Gorgeous this. dog, and absolutely so sweet. This dog is one. Uh, she's ready to go. She's been there for a couple months, and they're like, we got to get her a home. She is stunning, like, and the sweetest little animal ever, and she needs a home. It's a great time, you know. With supply chain problems, why not go ahead and think about <laughs> there's no supply chain at the Humane Society. I don't like saying get a dog for the holidays. Make sure you're definitely wanting one. She's about 39, 40 pounder. Perfect. Uh, she's Way a, better than the Turbo Man. She's a stray. Yep. Yeah, the, the kids aren't going to love that forever. Wants an active family, her own yard. She's goofy. She's fun. Uh, she's a little bit shy at first, but once I mean, she was with me, but then once she got to like, she was leaning on me and doing it. They're just uh, adorable. So there's another one hop on that right there. Her name is Marie. She's up there and uh, 12 days of strays uh, with the humane society. We start that off, which I think is fantastic. And Hooters and Lerner and Row, they pay for everything. If you go get Marie today or whenever Marie is one of the 12 days of strays. So if you go down there and say, Hey, Holmberg told me about Marie. I want to see her. You fall in love. Hooters and Lerner and Row cover all the bills. So you just get to walk away with your new best friend forever. Kind of like Rexy did last night with George. I covered the bills just like fingers crossed that this dog and Rexy work out forever. If not, 
damn it all, he'll be in my house. But I'm hoping that it doesn't. George is awesome. George is incredible. Uh, Marie's kind of got that same kind of vibe. She's just that real cool laid back dog. And she's only one, so really easy to train. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, do you have the board of musical treats this morning? Working on it right now. Right, what yeah. do you got? Uh, brought to you by Action Ride Shop. The boys over there, Josh and those guys, they've got uh, all kinds of bikes. No supply chain issues with those guys. They're loaded up. They bought ahead of time. They're good to go. Uh, and they just groomed the mountain up north. They did the fake snow. So oh, they did? Yeah, they're getting that thing started and ready. I heard, I heard it was too warm up there. It is, but going. they're pumping fake they're snow all over. Go. So they got. I think a couple of the runs are open. Action Ride Shop has all the ski stuff, too. So yeah. Anything, that, anything, snowboard, anything outdoorsy. Get on over there. They'll take care of you. Uh, Southern and Gilbert over there in Mesa is where you can go or Action Ride Shop on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Poison Cry Tough for the lady in the basket, apparently. <laughs> uh, Pantera Domination, Slipknot Heretic Anthem. We got Head P.E. Bartender. Haven't heard that one in a while. Yeah. Uh, Alestorm Drink for last night's celebration. Uh, Let's do celebration. it. We'll do a little Alestorm okay. this morning to drink. The Holmberg Bound is out, and we're going to be doing that t- uh, last night, today. You can go get it anywhere. And then uh, tomorrow over at Celebrity Theater with Lovitz, Ali Sadiq, Colin Kane. It's going to be a go. All for, again, a great cause. Laughing and having a good time for a bunch of fun. Excited about that. My friend Richard Weaver said to me last night, he goes, I sat next to Lovitz on a plane once and chatted with uh, him and Chris Kattan. And he's like, you think he'll remember? And I'm like, how long ago was it? And he goes, 13 years. I'm like, no, he's not going to know. He's not going to remember. He might not remember gonna, that, but I, remember I, I am going to refresh his memory. Oh, yeah. Maybe he will remember this, but a, a friend of mine throws this out there. They're like, oh, yeah. He boned my cousin. Love it, did? Yeah. Oh. You got a name? Yep. And you got a name? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> of course I remember her. I remember her every time I put the salve on. Jealous? Ew. The bumps are a constant reminder. Was it, is it her, his cousin and he was, she boned John Lovitz? Yeah, and, and says way, what most women say. He's got a huge Amazing. hog. Yeah. He's got a big hog and he's really good at it. <laughs> yeah. Lovitz gets around. He doesn't like to talk about that. Dark horse. It's my personal life. Like you've got a big one. Shut up. <laughs> Where's your mother? You be quiet. I'll show it to your mom. He tried to bang my mom. I'm going to become your father, you know. He was hitting on my mom. It was weird. I think my mom would have done it, too, if I wasn't there. I think Lovitz would have got her. And now I'm abandoning her, like all the rest of them. See both my hands? I'm stirring your coffee That's right exactly now. right. I'm giving you a massage, and I'm in you. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, Lovitz. Lovitz is a killer when it comes to that. He's done well for himself with the ladies. Very. I love that guy. Uh, so that's going to be fun tomorrow, too. So let's just get Alestorm going and drink like crazy and be idiots and things like that. And we'll have fun. Is Brett? Call- yeah, we'll get him on the line, too. But, uh, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, look, look at all the stuff we got going on. This Black Rock Coffee Bar thing's great, too. But, again, you guys brought a lot of expired food last time. I would have been dumb on that, too. I don't know when. Had that in there a long time. I don't know when canned food was bad. I, I, don't, I don't pay attention to the expiration dates. It's in a can. I always thought that was the it's purpose. Like 10 years. Wasn't that what they used to do? Some, sometimes 25 years. But in the, yeah, in the olden yeah. days, they'd say, we're going to can the food so it lasts forever. And that's what bomb shelters and Mormons do. They have canned food. They can their food but and I it lasts that's, forever. But uh, I think maybe it's different when you, you know, you're doing the mason jar bottling, that it seals it differently. I don't, I don't know. know. Seems like that can doesn't have any air in it. Air is what wrecks the stuff. Yeah. Got me. But, yeah, you got to pay attention to that stuff. I don't understand it. I'd have brought a bunch of stuff thinking this is just things in my cabinet I'm not using. But, yeah, pay attention because you guys were kind of jerks. At, at least they, you know, cleaned out their. <laughs> sure. You got your cabinets. <laughs> and you're still entered for the car. I mean, nobody knows who dropped off the Your the pantry. Old oh, these yeah. have been there for 10 yeah. years? Fine. Just scoop them out and put them in and go try to win a Ford or a Lincoln. And if you did expired food, you know who you are. Maybe make good on that. 67th Avenue in Bell is where our man is uh, out there this morning. So we'll talk to Brett in just moments. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell? 98. I'm not cool with this at all. K-U-P-D. You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com.